Welcome to Capitol Hill. I'm Lyndall Curtis. The first inflation figures since the introduction of the carbon price came out today. Inflation in the September quarter was up 1.4% for the three months to September. For the year, inflation was up 2%. Electricity in the quarter went up by more than 15%, but the figures don't say what proportion of that is due to the carbon price. The government's means testing of the private health insurance rebate also helped push up health costs during the quarter. Joining me to discuss this and other issues are the Shadow Health Minister Peter Dutton and Labor MP Kelvin Thompson. Welcome to you both. Oh, good afternoon, Lyndall. Pleasure. Good Thanks, afternoon, Lyndall. Peter. We'll go, first to in, we'll go first to inflation, which is up, but not enough to worry the Treasurer. Contrary to the campaigns that have been launched by the Liberal Party, there is nothing in today's figures that suggests any evidence of a significant broad-based price increase due to the impact of the carbon price. The Treasurer also says there's a modern, modest impact of carbon prices. We are now about to see it flow through to everything everyone does. Electricity is the most important infrastructure everyday Australians have, and the price is just going to keep going up and up and up. Kelvin, electricity is up. A, a percentage of that would be due to the carbon price. That's exactly what the government intended, isn't it? Uh, well, it's certainly consistent with the, the modelling, Lyndall, that there would be an increase in electricity prices, and we've seen that. But the, the underlying inflation figure of 2.5% is exactly within the Reserve Bank's tar target range and uh, I think is uh, no basis for concern. The government has had inflation under control and has, it, this has been part of our strong economic performance from the time we were elected. Peter, can you really talk about the, the pressure on uh, people's budgets with the rise of electricity without talking about the compensation that the government has been giving and the benefit that homeowners would have got from cuts in interest rates? Lyndall, I can only relate to you the stories uh, that I get from my electorate uh, and as we visit uh, different communities around the country. Uh, people are genuinely hurting, not just in small businesses but in family households. Uh, people uh, have seen a 15 per cent increase in electricity prices and a over 14 per cent increase in gas prices. So this is impacting on families across the board and for low income families in particular, uh, the carbon tax uh, compensation goes nowhere near uh, the impact of the prices across the board uh, that have an adverse uh, effect on families and I think uh, most Australians are now starting to get a first taste of just how insidious this tax is and when Julia Gillard talks uh, in language where she says it's going to have a, an impact on prices, she means prices are going to go up. That's exactly what Labor's designed to take place under the carbon tax and that's uh, come true today and it'll come through, I think, through prices and feed through prices uh, as we go forward. The last major tax change was the goods and services tax, which was introduced by a coalition government. In the first inflation figures after the GST, inflation went up by more than three times annually what it's gone up today. Inflation was at 6.1% then. If that didn't, didn't uh, uh, wreck things, how will, how will the carbon price do it? Well, the interesting thing, uh, Lyndall, if you look at the GST, was that it replaced uh, a number of archaic taxes. Uh, so uh, whilst there was a one-off uh, impact, I think people understood that it replaced taxes. The other thing about the GST is that it's a transparent tax. Uh, this is a cascading tax with the carbon tax uh, and it will infiltrate every aspect of production in our country, of manufacturing. Uh, when people turn on their lights uh, in their home or in their small business, when people go into hospitals, all of that is impacted by the carbon tax in a way that people can't transparently see like they do with the GST and I think if you look uh, even deeper into these figures it's not just a carbon tax impact but it's also other decisions that the government's making. Uh, medical services the costs uh, went up by a wha you know, whopping four and a half percent over this period and I think the government uh, has a big problem on their hands and it's not just uh, as a result of the carbon tax it's the other incompetent policy decisions that they've made. We'll talk about health in a minute, but Kelvin, I know I've talked before on this program, isn't, isn't the problem for you that electricity bills don't come in weekly, they come in, uh, in quarterly, so they are lumpy payments and people get, may get a shock when they see their, their bills. Is that likely to have a bigger impact on people's attitudes to carbon pricing? 
Uh, that's fair comment, Lyndall, and I've personally been in favour of pegging electricity prices to things like uh, the rise in the price of the uh, value of the pension or to CPI. But I think it's important to understand here that the carbon price is only one of the factors leading to an increase in electricity prices, which in fact were doubling over a 10 year period prior to the introduction of the carbon price. Those price rises have been driven by increases in what they refer to as the poles and wires, the, the and, network And as the opposition cost, the says, that, that happened under state Labor governments. It, and it's happened under Conservative governments as well, Linda. This is the, the point, and the Prime Minister's been talking about electricity pricing uh, recently, and I think we do need to look at the regulatory arrangements surrounding electricity prices because they do cause hardship for pensioners and they cause hardship for families. But uh, the carbon price is only one aspect of that, and there is compensation in relation to the carbon price. Ninety per cent of all households receive compensation, and over half of all households receive compensation of 100 per cent or more. If we could go now to the changes the government's made in its mid-year economic outlook. Kelvin, uh, you're quite happy, aren't you, with the cuts to the baby bonus for the second and subsequent children because you were never happy with the baby bonus at all, were you? No, I, I think the, the baby bonus is a poor piece of uh, public policy. I, I don't think it's true that Australia needs more people. Our, our births outnumber our deaths by uh, double and, and we have a migration program of uh, over 200,000 net each year, so over 4,000 people uh, coming in every week into Australia. So I don't think uh, that our problem is a shortage of people. I, I can uh, accept people want to uh, have concerns about a shortage of affordable housing or a shortage of infrastructure, a shortage of schools or a shortage of, of hospital beds or a shortage of jobs. Those things are legitimate discussions. But the so idea would you, that, would you uh, prefer to see the money go into those other areas? Uh, I would and in, in particular earlier this year I gave a speech where I suggested that baby bonus money would be better spent in reducing the tertiary education fees and vocational education fees for young students. I think that would help help both families and help the nation. We need to put a greater focus on educating and training young Australians. Uh, Peter, you mentioned other things which were feeding into inflation. One of those was health costs. That was largely because the government's the, the decision to means test the private health insurance rebate flowed into these inflation figures. The, the decision to effectively uh, uh, cap the rebate at the level of, of CPI, the for the premium rises will flow into inf uh, inflation figures further, won't it? Well, of course it will, and uh, the problem is that this is the third change that the government's made to private health insurance after they promised at both the t 2007 and 2010 elections uh, that they wouldn't touch private health insurance. And if I we don't maintain a strong balance... I think the Prime Minister did balance... say last election did talk about the means testing of the rebate in the last election. Uh, she didn't talk anything about the changes that have been made uh, uh, announced by Wayne Swan uh, in the last uh, 48 hours. Little, uh, there was no mandate for that change and to attack uh, a million people who have private health insurance on incomes of under $24,000 a year. These are the families that will be impacted by Labor's uh, latest changes. It just provides uncertainty in the marketplace and people aren't sure whether they should take out or maintain their private health insurance. And if we have a run of people leaving private health insurance and putting extra pressure on public hospitals, uh, everybody's the loser because people just don't believe that our public hospitals can cope with that extra stress and we need that good balance and unfortunately at the moment uh, the government uh, in its desperate grab for cash is whacking families when it comes to their costs of living and that includes the increases in the costs of their private health insurance. You're, you're critical of the private health insurance changes. Your colleagues have also been critical of those changes and the cuts to the baby bonus. Yet when they're asked if you'll vote against it, they say they have to wait for the detail and say that the devil's in the detail. If it's actually going to look worse to you when you see the detail, why can't you say now that, that you won't be supporting these measures when it comes to a vote on the floor of parliament? Well, there are a couple of points uh, to make there. Uh, first is that uh, quite often, if I just talk about my own portfolio for a second in health, uh, where the government says one thing, but when you see the legislation, it's something quite different. Uh, so in many so cases, it might be better? Starve. Well, I, I suspect uh, when it comes to Labor, it won't be, but uh, this is a tricky government and you've got to look at the detail in writing. I don't believe what it is that Wayne Swan says. So I, I think, uh, look, at what, uh, what, look at what they've got to say. That's the first point. The second point, uh, is that uh, you have to remember that this government 
uh, inherited a, an enormous amount of uh, cash in the bank. They were running uh, surplus budgets uh, before Labor got, came in. They've run up enormous debt and so that's what's driving these decisions and that's the worst part to it. Uh, they aren't making decisions uh, around private health insurance to improve our health system or set it up for the ageing of our population which we know is coming uh, down the track. They have done it uh, for purely financial reasons and there are going to be all sorts of uh, policy consequences and uh, the fact is that we aren't the government, we're the opposition. So in terms of our policies, uh, we'll make our policies known in the run up to the next election, properly costed and I think if we're successful at the next election, uh, we can right some of the wrongs that uh, the Australian Labor Party uh, has uh, committed against the Australian people. Calvin, you're a Labor backbencher. How powerful is the opposition's arguments on cost of living and how dangerous are they for the Labor Party? Well, uh, people do have concerns about cost of living, Lyndall, and their legitimate concerns. But the sort of support that the government has been providing through things like the school kids bonus, uh, through things like paid parental leave, through things like the, the family tax benefits and the like, has been very substantial assistance. And furthermore, the, the sound financial policies that we've been adopting have set in place the preconditions for the Reserve Bank to engage in numerous cuts in official interest rates since we came to power. And this has meant that on an, an average $300,000 mortgage, a typical family is four and a half thousand dollars a year better off than they were during the period of the Howard government. So I think that uh, we've been taking real action in relation to these pressures. I think we're having a, a somewhat surreal debate here where the opposition on the one hand says that they are in favour of balancing the books and sound financial management and then every time the Labor government takes the steps that we need to take, the difficult steps that we need to take to balance the books, the opposition comes out and opposes them. So whether it's defence expenditure or private health insurance or baby bonus or wherever it is, they find some reason to oppose it. So their budgetary strategy is nonsense. It's not fair income. Uh, Peter, Joe Hockey gave a speech uh, some time ago talking about uh, the age of entitlement, saying it's, it's over. Yeah, governments of, of both colours, the Coalition and now the Labor Party, introduce new entitlements. The Coalition introduced the baby bonus. Uh, the Labor government's introduced the school kids bonus. Do, do governments uh, hand out too much money to people under the guise of bonuses when they should be, when it's not actually core government business? Well, governments are under greater pressure to hand out uh, more money when uh, the governments are managing the economy poorly and that's what we've seen over the course of the last five years. Uh, Kevin Rudd, when he got elected in 2007, uh, gave out money uh, like there was some sort of uh, going out of government sale. As it turned out, that's exactly what happened to him. And uh, the fact is that uh, Julia Gillard's continued on that same theme. Uh, the government tries to buy uh, votes and buy themselves out of a difficult uh, political environment. Uh, none of this is based on sound economic policy. If uh, inflation uh, is going to get out of control in this country, uh, then there won't be any downward pressure on interest rates. And I think uh, Kelvin can say all he likes about the fact that uh, they believe that uh, their figures and the statisticians say that they're Families uh, are better off. Families are not better off. And, and they'll tell you that as you walk down the street. And that's where I'll have to leave it. Peter Dutton and Kelvin Thompson, thank you very much for your time.